In this video, we're going to address the decision of whether to sell or process further. What is a sell or process further decision? Some manufacturers, particularly those involved in food processing and natural resources, have to make a sell or process further decision. Often these manufacturers process raw materials, things like milk, corn, oil, livestock, or lumber and they have to decide whether to process the raw material to a particular point in the production process or to continue processing them further, perhaps even to the point of producing a finished good. Management has to determine at what point in the production process do they want to sell their product. Should they sell as is or should they process further? They do this by exploring the revenues they can obtain if they sell as is and the revenues and costs they will incur if they process further. Let's demonstrate this concept using an example, a single product example. In order to do so, we're going to use incremental analysis, applying all the steps in the process, from explicitly stating the alternatives right down to making a recommendation in step 5. Aleta Limited produces LLD4, a chemical powder. The cost to produce one kilogram of LLD4 includes the following. Direct materials of $32, direct labor of $22, variable overhead of $13, and fixed overhead of $9. The company sells LLD4 for $108 per kilogram. They currently produce 40,000 kilograms of the product. Aleta Limited has unused capacity and they can process LLD4 into a more refined product called XLD4. If they process LLD4 into XLD4, direct materials will increase by $4, direct labor will increase by $9, and variable overhead will increase by $5. Management has determined that fixed overhead will not change if it's processed further the company can sell XLD4 for $124 per kilogram. Should the company sell LLD4 as is or process it further into XLD4? Step 1 is to explicitly state the alternatives. In this case, the alternatives are either to sell LLD4 as is or to process it further into XLD4. Step 2 is to determine which costs are relevant. Remember that relevant costs are the ones that change between alternatives and happen in the future. Let's analyze each revenue and cost individually and then indicate if it applies to the sell or process further option. We'll highlight the revenues and costs for LLD4 in yellow and the revenue and costs to process into XLD4 in green. The direct material cost to produce 1 kilogram of LLD4 is $32. If we want to produce it into an XLD4, it costs us $4 more per kilogram. So direct materials are $36 for XLD4. These costs clearly change between alternatives and they're both future costs. So the direct materials for both of these products are relevant information for our analysis. The direct labor costs are the same. LLD4 is $22 per kilogram. XLD4 is $9 more for direct materials of $31 per kilogram. Changing between alternatives and a future cost? Both are relevant for our analysis. We then have variable overhead, $13 per kilogram for LLD4, $5 more for XLD4, so $18 per kilogram for XLD4. Both of them change between the alternatives and our future costs. Both are relevant. Finally, the fixed overhead costs are $9 per kilogram for LLD4 and management feels that it will be the same for XLD4, $9 per kilogram. Although the fixed overhead is a future cost, it does not change between alternatives and therefore it's irrelevant and can be ignored for purposes of this incremental analysis. Management can sell a kilogram of LLD4 for $108 and a kilogram of XLD4 for $124. We can see that the revenues are future revenues and that they change between alternatives, so these revenues are relevant and must be taken into account. Did we miss anything? We did not analyze the 40,000 kilograms. We can see that it's identical for both alternatives because we can process 40,000 kilograms of LLD4 into 40,000 kilograms of XLD4. 
because the volume produced is identical, we can perform our incremental analysis on a per kilogram basis. Note that if the additional processing had resulted in different quantities, we would have to perform the analysis based on total revenues and total costs. However, in this case, because there's no change in the volume, we can perform the analysis on a per kilogram basis and ignore the issue of volume. So for this analysis, in this example, 40,000 kilograms is irrelevant. We now have all the relevant revenues and costs. We can move on to step three, compare the relevant revenues and costs to determine the difference. Our quantitative analysis. We'll use the chart format with column one as the description, column two as the cell as LLD4, column three as the process further into XLD4, and column four as the difference between the two alternatives. We'll calculate the difference as the cell minus the process further. We'll start with the sale per kilogram. For column two, cell LLD4, it's $108. For process further, XLD4, it's $124. 108 minus 124 is equal to negative 16. We'll place that in column four, the difference. We're then going to determine all the costs per kilogram. So I put a subtitle in column one of cost per kilogram. Note that the costs will be input as negative numbers. That's because there are costs and they have to be deducted from the revenues. We'll start with direct materials per kilogram. $32 for cell LLD4. Direct materials for process further are $4 more. So $32 plus $4 is equal to $36. So we'll place a negative $36 in column three under process further. Negative $32 minus negative $36 is equal to positive $4, which is the difference in the last column. We'll do the same analysis for direct labor. Negative $22 in column two for cell. Direct labor for process further is $9 more. So $22 plus $9 is equal to $31. So we place negative $31 in column three under process further. Negative 22 minus negative 31 is equal to positive nine, which is the difference in column four. Finally, variable overhead per kilogram. Negative $13 in column two for cell. For the process further, it's $5 more. So $13 plus $5 is equal to $18. So we place a negative $18 in column three under process further. Negative 13 minus negative 18 is equal to positive five, which is the difference in column four. Adding up all the costs per kilogram, we see that the total cost per kilogram for the cell option is negative 67, and for the process further option is negative 85. The difference is negative 67 minus negative 85, which is positive 18, which we place in the difference column, column four. We're now going to obtain the sum of each column. Sell as LL4 is equal to $41, calculated as $108 sales revenue minus $67 total costs. Process further into XLD4 is $39, calculated as $124 sales revenue minus $85 total costs. And the difference column? Positive two, calculated as $41 minus $39 or as minus $16 plus $18. Okay, exactly what does this mean? The difference in column four is equal to the increase, if it's a positive number, or decrease, when it's negative, in operating income per kilogram when we compare the two alternatives. In this case, the company's operating income will increase, because the number is positive, by $2 per kilogram if the company decides to sell LLD4 as is. This is because the incremental costs of processing further at $18 per kilogram are higher than the incremental revenues of processing further at $16 per kilogram. It's clear that given the quantitative analysis we just completed, the company should continue to sell LLD4 as is and not process it further into XLD4. If they do process it further, they'll lose $2 per kilogram and reduce their operating income. Management would now have to consider qualitative factors, step four in our incremental analysis steps. The problem? No additional information was provided in the question, so this is really difficult to do. 
Can we think of any reason why this company would choose to process further into XLD4 even when it causes them to lose $2 per kilogram in operating income? I can't think of any qualitative factors that would support that kind of decision. So given both the quantitative and qualitative analysis, management should recommend that the company sell LLD4 as is. This is, of course, step five in the incremental analysis process. Let's return to the question again for a moment. Recall that we ignored the fact that the company produced 40,000 kilograms of LLD4 and was able to process that further into 40,000 kilograms of XLD4. We completed the analysis using per kilogram revenues and costs because the amount produced did not change between alternatives. However, let's just explore. Would the company's decision have changed if the analysis had been performed using total revenues and total costs? If we took each of the per kilogram revenues and costs and we multiplied them by 40,000 kilograms, we would find that LLD4 has total direct materials of 1,280,000, total direct labor of 880,000, total variable overhead of 520,000, and total sales revenue of 4,320,000. If we did the same for XLD4, we would have total direct materials of 1,440,000, total direct labor of 1,240,000, total variable overhead of 720,000, and total sales revenue of 4,960,000. Now, if we place this information into our comparison chart, we would see that the difference in operating income is $80,000 increase if the company decides to sell LLD4 as is. This is exactly the same outcome. In our per kilogram chart, the difference was equal to an increase of $2 per kilogram. Multiply $2 per kilogram by 40,000 kilogram and you get the $80,000 difference in operating income. It's still clear that the company should continue to sell LLD4 as is and not process it further into XLD4. You can see that using totals did not cause the outcome to change, although we do get a better idea of the magnitude of the loss for the company as a whole. Note that we have just applied the steps in incremental analysis to a sell or process further single product example. How would our analysis differ if the company produced multiple products from a single raw material? That's a topic for a future video. Thanks so much for watching.